Welcome to the Golden State. I'm Alice Ford and this is beautiful Colorado. I'm going to be taking you guys on an epic road trip this week to some of Colorado's best hot springs, national parks, and beautiful places. So first stop is picking up my mom in Rifle, Colorado. So let's go. Good morning, everybody. I just picked up my mom and we were just packing up our last few things here and about to hit the road. Our first stop is gonna be Ure, Colorado, where we're gonna be hitting our first hot spring. That's my mom. Hi. And um, it's gonna be fantastic. We'll show you some of the beautiful scenery along the way. And um, I'm excited for our first dip. Me too. <laughs> We made it to our first stop, the town of Ure, Colorado, and the hot pools aren't open yet, so we're gonna walk around town for a little bit, grab some lunch, and then hit the pools. Ure was established by miners chasing silver and gold in the 1800s. Coined as the Switzerland of America, all of Main Street is a national historic district. This is Uray Hot Springs, and the pool I'm in right now is 106 degrees. There's actually three pools here that range in different temperatures, and it's a local favorite for getting a good soak. We're just heading up into the mountains now after leaving Ure and it just started snowing, which is perfect. Behind me is one of the mines by Red Mountain, which you can see behind me. And back in the 1800s, this was actually kind of a big boom town. There are actually more than six mining towns here and today these are all being reclaimed. Uh, a lot of the water here in the rivers is actually orange from a lot of the old mining that went on here. And now it's just a ghost town, so you can come wander here and explore some of the ruins. Uh, but we're gonna head back on the road and try and get out of the snow uh, and head to our hotel in Pagosa Springs. Uray is connected to Pagosa Springs via the San Juan Skyway, which is one of the most scenic drives in America. Good morning from the Springs Hotel. I'm in Pagosa Springs right now and staying at the Springs Hotel. There are actually 23 hot pools here and I'm standing in just one of the many here. This one is 101 degrees and they range in temperature all the way up to 111 degrees. Uh, behind me, which I will show you later, is the Mother Spring, which is about 144 degrees. It's about 6.45 in the morning right now because we are up to see the sunrise over the hot pools. So we will wait a little while for the sun to peak over the mountains here and then I will show you more of the resort. Well, there wasn't much of a sunrise this morning because we're actually hidden behind a mountain. But at least now I can see you guys in a little bit of a better light here. And one of the really amazing things about this hotel that I didn't tell you yet 
is that if you stay the night here, you actually get 24 hour access to the hot springs. So my mom and I actually got in last night and we came around 9 p.m. and took a soak before we went to bed and it was just absolutely fabulous. And right now no one else is out here, so we're having a private tour of all of the 23 pools, which is pretty fantastic. After getting our fare of soap this morning at the hot springs, we thought we needed to stretch our legs. And about 15 miles north of Pagosa Springs is this beautiful waterfall called Treasure Falls. It's just about a 10 minute walk from the parking lot off the road. So it can get very popular later in the day. Lucky for us, we're here at about 9 a.m. So we're going to get a little exercise, soak in some of this beauty, and then head back on the road. On the open road again, we headed towards Great Sand Dunes National Park. Some of the first long-term inhabitants of this valley were the Ute Native Americans who called the Great Sand Dunes Sawap Manach, or sand that moves. One of our last stops on this epic road trip is the Great Sand Dunes National Park here in Colorado. And these are the tallest sand dunes in all of North America. And right now we have the place almost entirely to ourselves. It's the off season here. It's actually about 30 degrees, so my fingers are <laughs> freezing right now. We're gonna explore some more of these sand dunes. Hopefully hike maybe at least to the bottom of the dunes here and tell you a little bit more about the geology of the park before we head off to our last stop. Covering an area of more than 30 square miles, the tallest dune is 700 feet tall, and it's estimated that there are more than 5 billion cubic meters of sand. I just ran from my camera back there up to the top of the sand dune, and now I'm really out of breath. <laughs> I also just figured out that it's really hard to do a handstand in a sand dune. So you'll see my terrible attempts at that right now. <sighs> These sand dunes are just massive. And I've been to a lot of sand dunes over the years, from the Mesquite Valley sand dunes in Death Valley <laughs> to the sand dunes of Dubai. And these are some of the most beautiful and just large sand dunes I've ever seen. I see that my mom is over there freezing to death. So I'm gonna take in a last couple views of this beautiful place and head back in the car to finish our road trip. After the lakes within this valley receded, exposed sand was blown by the predominantly southwest winds toward the Sangre de Cristos which eventually formed the dune fields over an estimated tens of thousands of years. Well, that's nature for you. On our way out to the dunes, this little river behind me was actually frozen solid. And in the last few minutes, the sun has melted it, leaving me with some rather wet feet on the way back. <laughs> 